Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace be unto you and peace from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha the Messiah, his son. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you another word. And our word for today is worship. Wow. This is a big word today. Our Father deserves the worship that comes from his people. But you can't give him anything that you want to give him. In order for it to be pleasing to him, you have to give him exactly what he prescribes. Not your own worship, not something that pertains to what a man taught you or what you saw others do. You actually have to go into his word and find out exactly what he wants from you. But that is the problem. We will not pick up this book and study for nothing in the world. This book is kryptonite to black people. We are afraid of this book. And this book is salvation. And this book is deliverance. And this book is your history. In this book, there's life. And yet we refuse life. In order for you to know how to worship, you have to actually know who the object of your worship is. That is another problem. How can you worship when you don't know who to worship? You don't know what his name is. And you don't know how he wants you to worship. We're going to examine all of those things today. So we can get a better understanding what this word worship means. Now, I'm going to go outside of my norm and we're going to start this day with the scripture. Then the definition. John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, brothers and sisters, check this out. It's telling you that true worshipers, you see that? It says, now is when the true worshipers. Now, if the Bible is telling you that there's true worshipers, it also must be an alternative. And that is a fake worshiper. How do you know the difference between a true worshiper and a fake worshiper? It tells you right here. True worshipers will worship the Father. Stop. So a true worshiper doesn't worship the Son. Did you know that our Messiah never told you to worship him? He always pointed you to the Father. That's a true worshiper is going to worship the Father only. The fake worshipers will worship someone else. The true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Not this image. Every time you call upon this name Jesus, remember, Jesus is attached to an image. Jesus is a created name. It's about 400 years old. It's about the same time that we were taken captive. It never existed in ancient times. When our Messiah walked the earth, if you were to call that name Jesus, they would have probably thought you were talking about one of these Romans or something. Because in Hebrew, there is no such thing. And remember, our Messiah is a Hebrew. So he had a Hebrew name. But yet, this is the person that you've been calling upon. And you've been in error all of these years. Why? Because he told you right here that a true worshiper will worship the Father. 
And then it tells you in spirit and in truth. You have to have the spirit of the most high for that communication, brothers and sisters. It's the only way that you're going to be able to worship the father in spirit and in truth. You know, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But in the context, it states that he that heareth my words and puts them into practice. It is he that knows the truth and the truth shall make him free. So you have to apply the word of the most high to yourself. That's truth. Then it tells you for the father seeketh such to worship him. This is very sought after by the father. Do you know that this is something that he cannot find? Brothers and sisters, we've been in church for quite a few years. I know my whole life has been spent in church and I cannot remember worshiping the father in church. All I remember worshiping is Jesus. <laughs> Think about it. If you've been in church all your life, you know, all of our songs, everything is about worshiping Jesus, but brothers and sisters, look at what the scripture says. Forget everything that you've learned because you've never checked it out before. So I'm showing you now is telling you that true worshipers are going to worship the father. And in Luke chapter four, verse five through seven, I want to give you an account. I want to show you something here. Things that we're missing that we're not paying attention to. In Luke chapter 4, verse 5 through 7, verse 5 reads as thus. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. You guys know this story, right? The Messiah was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And after he fasted, he was a hunger. And then Satan came to tempt him. And in verse six, it states, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. Stop. How can Satan give power, all this power, he said, to the Messiah if he did not have it? See, this is what you're missing, brothers and sisters. I want you to understand there's two gods. There's the God of this world and his name is Satan. And then you have the master of the universe, and his name is Yahuwah. And Yahuwah, the master of the universe, has given Satan all the power over the earth. Why would he do that? Because Satan's job is to prove and to test the children of the Most High. Who is that? Those are the children of Israel. This is what the whole Bible, this is what everything is about. Remember something. Yahusha, our Messiah, was from the tribe of Judah. So he is from the, na or the house or the nation of Israel. He is not a Roman. He's not a European like that picture showed you. He is a Hebrew Israelite. So when he came here on earth, he came into Satan's domain. Listen what Satan says next after all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me. See now who delivered it unto him? The father, Yahuwah and to whomsoever I will give it. You see that he's telling you, I have the power to give you this and all of the glory that accompanies it. But you have to do something. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Now let's see the reply. Verse 8. And Yahusha answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahuwah thy God, and him only shalt thy serve. So you see, the Messiah himself has told you that you are to worship Yahuwah only 
and only him shalt thou serve. He did not point to himself and say that you are to worship him. He said Yahuwah, and Yahuwah is his father. I want you to see something else, brothers and sisters. You see, when I look at the scripture, I don't know. I tend to see things that other people don't see for some reason. Maybe because the spirit of the Most High is dwelling in me. It is overtaking me. Look at where it says, and Yahusha. Now, in that place where I place Yahusha, the true name of the Messiah, it normally would say Jesus. It would say, and Jesus answered and said unto him. But I changed it to his Hebrew name, which is Yahusha. The Messiah said, I've come in my father's name and you receive me not, but another shall come in his own name and him you shall receive. Well, you receive Jesus. Now look at the next name that it comes up. Satan. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that this name Satan has been translated correctly from the Hebrew into the English term? But yet they could not translate our father's name correctly into the English. His name is Yahuwah. But what they have put in, re in replacement of his name is capital L-O-R-D, which is Lord. And if you look in Hebrew, Lord means Baal or Baal. <laughs> this is really crazy, brothers and sisters what they've done to twist the scriptures. But once you study, you can get through all of this, the stumbling blocks that they have placed here before you. So if you can get the correct transliteration of the name from the Hebrew to the English, which is Yahuwah, why didn't they do so? Why did they replace it with Baal or Lord? And if you can get Yahusha, the proper Hebrew name in its transliteration from the Hebrew into English, why are they using the name Jesus? If you can get the true name of Satan transliterated from Hebrew into English, why could you not get the true name? <laughs> this is ridiculous of the Messiah and the true name of the Father translated correctly. So when you see the replacement for our Messiah, and that name would be Jesus, that replacement name, that is a name that Satan set up. Let me say that again. That is a name that Satan set up. It's only 400 years old a little under 400 years old. There is no J in Hebrew. The J was only created about 400 years ago. There's no, no us or US at the end of our Messiah's name. What is going on here? This is the deception of the ages, brothers and sisters. This is for all of those who do not study. If the ones who do not study will always believe a lie because they're in a strong delusion. They have no knowledge. Thou shall worship Yahuwah thy God and him only shall thy serve. Nobody else. Then he says, for it is written. Now you must ask yourself, where is it written? In Deuteronomy 10, verse 20, now this, you know that Deuteronomy, the first five books, the Pentateuch is only written unto the Israelites. Thou shalt fear Yahuwah, and him shalt thy serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. Now you see the word fear when you look it up. It comes out to worship. 
See KJV dictionary definition fear. In scripture, fear is used to express a filial or a slavish passion. In good mean men, the fear of God is an holy awe or reverence of God in his laws, which springs from a just view and real love of the divine character, leading the subjects of it to hate and shun everything that can offend such a holy being, and inclining to them inclining to them. To aim at perfect obedience, this is filial fear. Seven, the worship of God. So you see, this word fear also means the worship. And then it has an example in Psalms 34. It says, I will teach you the fear of Yahuwah. That means the worship of Yahuwah. So when we go back to the scripture, we understand when Yahushua was saying this, he was quoting from Deuteronomy, brothers and sisters. He was quoting the Old Testament. If you research the scriptures, you're going to see this all over the place. It's a reoccurring theme. He always says, for it is written, or as it is written, or he says, this one says, Isaiah said, or this one says. Then you have to go back and find where it is written or where it is said. And then you will find out who is the person who's speaking. Who's speaking? The father, he was telling them. Thou shall only worship Yahuwah, and him only shalt thy serve. Worship. To pay divine honors to, to reverence with supreme respect and veneration. Thou shalt worship no other God. Exodus 34. Two, to respect, to honor, to treat with civil reverence nor worship with a waxen epitaph. That is an example. That means a graven image. Three, to honor with extravagant love and extreme submission. Brothers and sisters, when you look through this definition, you see a reoccurring theme again. And in one, two, and three, you see honor, 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 right? So let's put this all together. To pay divine honors to, to worship no other God, and then when you worship him, you must have worship him with extravagant love and extreme submission. What does that mean, extravagant love? He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And extreme submission, <laughs> that means with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your soul, and that you would give yourselves freely to him. So in 1 Samuel chapter 15, 22, let's read this. And Samuel said, Hath Yahuwah as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahuwah? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Now we're getting into what he wants. We just identified who you are supposed to worship, the Father. We know what his name is now. It's been hidden for thousands of years and deleted from the Old Testament over 7,000 times and replaced with capital L-O-R-D. Every time you see that, that is Yahoo. So you know his name. Now he's telling you exactly the behavior that is pleasing to him. He wants you to be obedient. What does he want you to be obedient to? He wants you to be obedient to his word, his laws, his precepts, his commandments. That is his moral mind. That's his mindset. Do you think that he's going to change his mindset for you? No, you have to change for him. Listen, he says to obey is better than sacrifice. He doesn't need your sacrifice of play, praise. I mean, the sacrifice of praise is a wonderful thing if it's coupled with obedience. But in rebellion and then giving him praise that comes from the lips, it does not work. Because in verse 23, it tells you, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So all of those who are rebelling against him, what does that mean? You're not keeping his commandments. He says it's as the transgression of the law of witchcraft. That's what sin means, transgression of the law of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So listen, 
You're an idolater if you're not keeping his commandments. Well, we know that we were all idolaters because we was worshiping that Jesus and that Jesus has an image, brothers and sisters. And he told you not to make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or the earth beneath or the waters under the earth. For he is a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers and to the children and to the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. Anyone who doesn't keep his commandments hates him. If you hate his word, you hate him. And showing mercy unto thousands, thousands of them that love me and what? Keep my commandments. So he said, because you have rejected my word, the word of Yahuwah, he's also rejected you from being king. Who is he speaking to? He was speaking to King Saul. He gave Saul a commandment. He told him to carry this thing out. Saul did not do it. He listened to the people instead. So what happened was because of his rebellion, his disobedience, because he rejected the word of Yahuwah, the kingdom was stripped from him. So the father doesn't want your sacrifice of praise, your lip service. He says he wants your obedience. And in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, listen to this. Wherefore, Yahuwah said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precept, the laws and the commandments of men. Who is saying this? Wherefore, Yahuwah said, Yahuwah said, not Moses, no one else. He's telling you exactly who said this. Brothers and sisters, this is important. Yahuwah said this. These people draw near me with their mouth. Who is he talking about? The Israelites. He's talking about you, brothers and sisters. They draw near me with their mouth. And with their lips, they honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. What is there? What are they doing that their heart is so far from him? They're not keeping his commandments. How do we know that? Because in the last part, he says, and the worship, see the word fear, that means worship towards me is taught by the commandments of men. So you have the opposite. They've left the father's commandments and start following the commandments of men. So therefore, the father says, this is nothing but lip service. Look in Matthew 15, verse 8. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see, brothers and sisters, the same language, but you have to remember who's speaking here. We just came from Isaiah. We just identified who made the statement. Here, the Messiah is quoting from Isaiah. He's quoting from what the father says. And he's telling them the same exact thing over and over again. But look in verse 9, he says, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now, let me tell you what the people, the Jesus people say. That when Jesus, they say, was making this statement, he was talking about himself, you see. But in vain they do worship me. But brothers and sisters... We just came from Isaiah. Remember, Yahuwah said this. <laughs> Yahuwah said this. Let me say that again. Yahuwah said this. The Messiah was quoting from what his father said. He was not applying this to himself. He's telling those scribes and the Pharisees exactly what they were doing. Yahuwah said. And their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Now in Mark chapter 6 verse 8, listen to this. Verse 6, he answered and said unto him, who answered? Our Messiah, Yahusha. Listen what the Messiah says. Well, hath Isaiah prophesied about you hypocrites? Stop. <laughs> you see, he's telling you right there. 
He's quoting from Isaiah. He's not telling you that this is applied to him. He's telling you that this is from the father's lips. And then he says, Isaiah has prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, we know it's written in Isaiah. This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. We know that the father is speaking now. We're not fooled anymore. Verse 7 says, how be it in vain they do worship me. You know, we just read that before, right? You thought it was Yahusha or Jesus as you know him as speaking, but it's not. This is the father speaking, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Verse 8, for laying aside the commandment of the Most High. You see, they've laid aside the commandments of Yahuwah that they will hold to the traditions of men, such as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things ye do. Many other such things ye do. What happened was the apostles just came in and they began to eat. They didn't wash their hands. And the scribes and the Pharisees saw this and they was like, "Uh uh-oh, we got you. We see you're breaking the commandments. You're eating with unclean hands. You did not wash your hands. You see the accusation? And our Messiah had to come back at them. Because you see, washing your hands before eating a meal is not in the commandments. This is something that they created to put upon the people. And he was putting them in check. And he was telling them the same thing that they're doing is the same thing that the church is doing today. They've laid aside the commandments of the Most High and they're keeping to the traditions of men. This is why they're worshiping Jesus. Hmm, that's right. They're not worshiping the Son, which he never told you to do in the first place, but they're worshiping Baal. For that name, Jesus, is connected to Baal or Baal. Brothers and sisters, this thing is critical that you have to worship the right person. And if you do not go into the scriptures and check it for yourself, you will find yourself worshiping Baal. Stop it, brothers and sisters. Our people perish because of lack of knowledge. That's right. And if you refuse knowledge, if you reject it, he says he's going to reject you and your mother. He's going to reject everyone. Brothers and sisters, get on the ball. Stop laying aside the commandment of the Most High. This is a reoccurring theme in the scriptures that everybody kept going against the commandments and practicing sin. And sin is transgressing the law or the commandments, brothers and sisters. We cannot do that. Now, this is what we have to offer. (laughs) Empty, vain worship. This is learned behavior. This is not scriptural. You have all of these people crying and weeping for Tammuz. You'll find out in the Old Testament the same thing that we're doing now in these mat- these churches with these uh, masses of people. We're worshiping Tammuz. Remember, none of these people here is calling on the Father. Not one. They're all calling on Jesus. They're all worshiping him. They have nothing to do with our Father. Just think, thousands of people that are present here are calling upon Satan's Messiah. Remember, everything the Father does, Satan has a counter. The Father has his Messiah, who is Yahusha, who tells you to keep the commandments. Satan has his Messiah, who is Jesus, who tells you you don't have to keep the commandments. All you have to do is confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart, and thou shalt be saved. You have to remember the scripture says that he that endureth to the end shall be saved. What do you have to endure? You have to endure this life. You have to keep the commandments in spite of everything and everyone around you. 
This type of worship is empty. This is what you call lip service. This is not what he wants. He says he wants obedience more than a sacrifice of praise. Where did they get this from? Somebody taught them this. It is not from knowledge. They say that they have the spirit. Look at the lady in the front. She's crying, she's weeping, and she's full of the spirit right now. That's what we used to use those terms in church, right? She's full of the spirit, but she's calling on Jesus. So what spirit does she have? The spirit of Baal, the spirit of the devil. You read before that Satan said that he has all this power and he would give it to the Messiah if the Messiah would bow down and worship him. So all of the power that you guys have is because you are worshiping Baal. You say that, oh, Jesus, he healed my body. I've been calling on that name for all these years and he's kept my house out of foreclosure and he's gotten my sons out of jail and he's done this and he's done that and Jesus is the reason for my salvation. And brothers and sisters, you are in a strong delusion that you would believe a lie. And the only reason that you can believe this lie is because you refuse to pick up this book and read. The father says he's looking for true worshipers. These are not. The true worshipers worship the father. The true worshipers know his name. The true worshipers are obedient. Mark 7 and nine, let's continue. And he said unto them, full well ye reject the commandment of the Most High that you may keep your tradition. Wow. This is what the church does. They don't care about the commandment of the Most High. I know you probably say, why does he always go after the church? Remember, I was there all my life. I went to their schools. I learned from the greatest teacher of our time, personally. And he taught me how to study. And he also told me, he says, David, don't go to, because I wanted to go to another seminary in order to further my education. And he says, David, don't do that. He told me to study history. That was the greatest piece of advice that I've ever had. Because everything is wrapped around history. Our book is about our history. And if you understand the history of Israel, you'll understand the history of us. And that's what I did. I studied history. And when you study history, you find out that all through history, they continue to reject the commandment of the Most High and continued to hold to the traditions of Baal. I'm going to prove to you right now that the church is wicked, backwards, and twisted. Let's get a review here. I'm going to give you four things. I have so many, it's a shame, but I'm just going to do four today. Sunday worship. The Father says that you are to worship on the seventh day, not the first day. It's supposed to be from sundown to sundown, Friday evening sundown to Saturday evening sundown. That is the Sabbath day. But the church worships on Sunday. Who created that? The Pope. The Roman Catholic Church. Next, you call upon Jesus. You say that he is the object of your salvation. Now remember the Bible says there is no other name under the sun given amongst men that you should be saved by. So you better make sure you have the right name. You need to check on that name. If you haven't checked on that name, how are you calling upon it? We have fallen into error all of these years because we will not pick up the book and check. Jesus is only about 400 years old. That's how old that name is. A little over 400. Who created it? The Roman Catholics, the Pope. <laughs> Are you starting to see a trend here? 
The Trinity doctrine, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptize them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you know the word Trinity is no place in the scriptures? The Father says that he is one. The Son says he and the Father is one. There is no division. There is no Trinity doctrine spoken of here. They added that word Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Who did that? The Roman Catholics. Who gave us the Trinity doctrine? The Roman Catholics, the Pope. That's a part of their pagan activities. It's been along for the longest. Huh. Communion. Where did you get that from? Communion is a cover-up for Passover. They've deleted Passover, you see. They've taken aside the commandment of the Most High. They laid that totally aside. And they start to serve the commandment of men, which is communion. Communion, the word is not found in the Bible. It was created by who? The Roman Catholics. Why? What did he say? You hold to your own traditions. You're teaching the doctrines and the commandments of men. It's not in the Bible. It's a doctrine that's been created by who? The Roman Catholic Church. What did they want to do? They wanted to keep you from Passover, which is done once a year. And they told you that you connect, you are to take communion every first Sunday or every mass or however your church does it. It has nothing to do with the father. I just gave you four things, brothers and sisters, that you do on a regular basis in church. And you don't even know what you're doing. I have unlimited amounts of pagan and lawless activities that the church does. This is what I make these videos for. Just to show you, brothers and sisters, you have to come out from amongst these people. Being with them will lead you straight to the pit. You will not see eternal life if you follow this behavior. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Brothers and sisters, these are the last days. All you have to do is pay attention to all of the things that are going on. You can perceive in your spirit that this is it. Verse 2, it's going to explain to you what is happening. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4. Traitors, heady minded, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Brothers and sisters, do you see what this is saying? From verse 2 to verse 4, this is all in the commandments. Remember, he's telling you that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Then he's telling you what is going on, that men will not keep the commandments anymore. They shall turn to themselves. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. What does that mean? The first commandment is thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Eloah with all of thy heart, with all of thy mind, and with all of thy soul. It says covetous, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, nor anything that is in thy neighbor's disobedient to parents honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long upon the land which the lord thy god giveth thee brothers and sisters all of these things are connected to the commandments look at verse 5 having a form of godliness what does that mean lip service they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. This is what we have been offering him all of these days, brothers and sisters. Empty worship. And then it tells you, but denying the power thereof. What power is that? 
It is in his commandments, brothers and sisters. But we are holding to the commandments and the traditions of men, but we are denying the power thereof. We are laying aside the commandments of Yahuwah that we may follow these evil men. And then the Bible tells you something significant here. From such, turn away. Shalom.